Hey guys, welcome back. It's Claytano. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And today is day 26 of the 30 day video challenge. The challenge where I take the first comment of the previous video and that is the video that I make in the following day. And in yesterday's video, we had a comment from Robbie Jano that said to go with the 10 best mons you've seen to climb RTA and what their best rune sets would be for RTA. So we get to do a top 10 video today and I'm super excited so let's just get right into it. Coming in at number 10 on the list is Camilla and the reason why she is on this list even though she does scale up HP and it gets diminished throughout the entire round is because she is so hard to crowd control and in a game mode that is super reliant on crowd control it makes Camilla super hard to deal with and she oftentimes does still get banned even though she's not one of the big main crowd control monsters. The best way to ruin her though would just be the normal way to ruin any Camilla, which is your typical violent with HP or attack slot 2, crit damage slot 4, and HP or attack slot 6. Now you want to make sure that you're having at least 30, 35,000 HP, then you could put the rest into attack. So whether it's through subs or in the main stats in 2, 4, and 6, it doesn't matter. Make sure you get that at least that amount of HP, then move on to attack after that. Up next we have the Light Panda Tian Lang, and it's pretty obvious why he's on this list. Okay, with RTA being super reliant on reducing attack bar, increasing attack bar, not only does he have that type of passive here that reduces the amount that the enemy actually buffs their gauge, he also has a full team cleanse. Now it may not be the most accurate cleanse, but it's still there and relevant and still gets the job done when needed. And not even to mention that he has a defense break on turn one. But he should definitely be ruined with violent with speed slot two, HP or defense slot four, and HP or defense slot six. Artemile is now coming in at number eight on the list. And the reason why is because his massive passive skill, <laughs> that was kind of fun to say, but it increases his defense up to 100% and also counterattacks whenever somebody gets hit. So you're not only gaining defense, which is so important in RTA, but you're also counterattacking, stunning people, removing their buffs, and just wreaking havoc all over the other team's combination. Now because of that, you want to make sure that you're building him on despair and also having maybe a nice set of will would be good on him as well. But for your 2, 4, and 6 slot, you want to make sure that you have some speed, a little HP, a little defense, a little speed, HP. You don't have to go speed slot 2, but just really trying to utilize all of his passive, all of his defense, and really getting in there as much as possible. Maybe even some crit rate is also good to have on Armile, but don't focus on it too much. And coming in at number 8 on the list is Sylvia. Now I know we're talking about a lot of LD Nat 5s, but don't worry, we'll get into the normal Nat 5s here as the list goes on because they're actually better than the LD Nat 5s. But she's actually really good because she brings another ally with her at the same time every single time she attacks. So think about Tark, but on a every single time you attack basis. So put her on violent with as much speed as you possibly can. So speed slot 2 is almost a must. And then you got HP and defense throughout the rest of the runes. You don't have to have HP slot 4, you don't have to have defense slot 6. You gotta just make sure that you're utilizing the most stats possible. So if you have HP slot 4 with a huge defense sub, go with that over having defense slot 4 with no HP sub. Does that make sense? Good. Number 6 on the list is Veladrol because for obvious reasons he has an attack bar boosting skill that is super important in RTA. And I know I've been saying the word super a lot in this video, but it really is super important in RTA. Not to mention the fact that he has a three turn immunity buff with a really low cooldown on it where he's only going to have one turn that he does not have immunity, which makes it really hard to get in there and CC him down without actually bringing a buff remover with you. And all Archangels really have a lot of nice base defense to work with. So because of that, he's going to scale really well in RTA. But here's how to build him. You want to make sure that you're building him super fast. So if you don't have a lot of fast violent runes, I actually recommend building him with Swift as fast as you can. So almost take like you would a Bernard and put it on your Veladrol. But of course, make sure you still have a lot of HP and defense substats where Bernard might not need that. He just needs to be as fast as possible. Does that make sense as well? Okay, I good. I'm not going to ask you again. Number five on the list is actually a natural four-star monster, guys. She is a 
beast. She has super low cooldowns. There it goes with that word again. She has extremely low cooldowns on her skills and full gauge attack boosting. So look at this skill too here. Removes all harmful effects on an ally target and fills up the attack bar. The fact that this is even an option on a natural four star monster guys you should be building her if you don't have her built but you do have her and you're looking to move up in ranks in rta this is a key monster that can turn games around she can literally take a game where you are going to lose and turn it around just by a couple violent procs just by increasing somebody's attack bar removing their stun removing their freeze or something crazy that just might have gone wrong in your fight she is somebody that can turn it around so absolutely ruin her i would say put her on violent as fast as possible just like all the other people hp and defense substats as well but there is another option to build her on swift almost like veladual same thing swift as fast as possible hp defense subs and if you wanted to use will on her you can if you don't have that option go with any other rune that you can make her as fast as possible with guys she's gonna really help you out for number four on the list we go back to ld monsters however this time we only go back to four star ld monsters here and that's tableau so technically he should be a little bit more obtainable right but there's a couple things that make tableau super extremely dangerous okay so let's first take a look here he has a 24 percent speed leader skill for arena so this absolutely works in rta not only that but his third skill is ridiculously op that i don't even know why this skill exists in the game of summoner's war it makes the attack bar of all enemies and all allies change to zero and it increases the attack speed of all allies for two turns this effect can't be resisted and ignores immunity that means this shit is happening whether you want it to or not and again going back to rta being super focused on attack bar reduction increase stunning and cc this little fucker is a monster and there's not exactly a whole lot of information on him yet and I understand that but personally looking at his skills if I were to ruin one myself I would probably want to make him as fast as possible to screw with the other team's attack bar right off the bat so it's pretty much the same build as the last two monsters swift with HP and defense substats and really just make him as fast as you can if you wanted to put him on violent you could but I personally would do swift so now we're getting into the top three and the next three are going to be your primary carry units where if you have one of these monsters I recommend you try to first pick it every single time you RTA no matter what no questions asked I don't care what the other person has chosen before you you must snap pick one of these monsters if you haven't now the first one we come to at number three is Varad and it's unreal the amount of times that Varad, I personally have Varad, and he has changed the game in so many different situations that he just makes it so easy. He makes it so easy because he has two full AoE freeze skills that actually give you so much time to do whatever you want with, not to mention the fact that his third skill also completely drops the enemy's attack bar to zero. I remember back in the day when Varad used to mean nothing. He was the worst dragon hands down by far and now he is literally so relevant in so many different areas of the game. I just am so lucky that I was able to summon a Varad and I hope you guys have the same luck as well because this monster is really one that I've come to love and cherish. And if you guys look at his skills here, again, attack bar decreases to zero and breezes. That basically gives you two whole turns to do whatever you want with. To violent proc into your second stun. To violent proc again back into absolute zero so you could reduce their attack bar again. And I have mine built on speed HP HP with violent nemesis just because I don't really care too much about having the defense and I had better speed runes on my HP runes. But I recommend if you do have the defense I would first probably invest in that, but don't neglect the HP on Varad because people know that defense is such a highly used 
stats in RTA, they oftentimes have a Lucian ready or a Fey ready that's going to be completely just blowing up your Virad because it's going to ignore the defense and you have zero health so you want to make sure that you're still not neglecting HP. Of course you can still ruin it on Swift and make it as fast as possible so that way you can get him out front, reduce the attack bar all the way down to zero and give your team a chance to make a move after that. That's also another strategy that works very well. And if you guys don't have a lot of luck with violent runes, I would say try swift runes and make them as fast as possible and see how it works. All right, so coming into number two, guys, it is no surprise. This is Ganymede here, and he is probably the king of RTA. And I'll go ahead and go over a couple reasons why, but his skills really speak for themselves. Because if you look at his third skill here, Seal Magic, it attacks the enemy with an ear resistible attack. It also can reset the attack bar of all enemies down to zero. It's such a great skill, but then also to back it up, he has this skill, Ventilate, where he can just ready his skill up again. It's stupid, because if you're in a situation where you're fighting a Ganymede and he gets a turn off, then you're pretty much just like sitting there waiting for your turn and watching your monsters die. It sucks. But I would absolutely recommend building every single Ganymede on Swift because look at his base speed is 113. That is higher than Bernard's. If you get off this attack where they do not have will runes or if you bring a buff stripper that is faster on Swift and can remove the will runes off of the other team and then you get a Ganymede off of that, it gives you such a huge advantage where you can build your allies with almost no speed and all attack and just come in and cleave the living crap out of them for, for after that. Or you can take a little bit more of a longer approach and just still have more CC and come back around and just say, okay, you don't get a turn the entire game and it sucks. All right, now coming in at number one, it is the queen of RTA because if it gets its third skill off, you're pretty much done. You'll be able to have one monster up the entire round and I guarantee you they're gonna make sure that they don't awaken the <laughs> the monster that's gonna revive or heal or cleanse any of your monsters so just keep that in mind but let's take a look here real quick so third skill decreases the attack bar of all enemies by 75% so think about what Verad did on his third skill it's pretty much doing the same thing, but then also it puts them to sleep for two turns. So it's not only putting them to sleep for two turns, it's also decreasing their attack bar by 75%, so you're almost gaining three turns on every single monster that you are up against when you have a fully clean shot to go against the enemy. It doesn't have a glancing check. It doesn't have an opportunity to glance because it does not touch the other monsters. It just puts them to sleep, reduces their attack bar. So going against fire monsters, it has much higher probability of landing this skill. But really you can build her with swift or violent as well. It doesn't matter which one you're wanting to use. It does matter what team you play with the Hathor. So again, if you want to use like a swift Hathor and reduce the attack bar of all your enemies and give your slower allies a chance to come in and make a move, then absolutely build it swift. If you're trying to go for longevity, build it violent. It's simple speed, HP, and defense subsets, just like pretty much all the other monsters that we just talked about. But other than that guys, that is my top 10 RTA list and the monsters that can get you up the highest in RTA the fastest. And if you have any of these monsters, definitely utilize them to your utmost advantage because they are amazing in their own ways. But thank you guys, as always, so much for watching. Stay soupy, don't be potatoes. If you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.